Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this video where we're going to be discussing simple and extended dominance in cost effectiveness analysis. Let's go. So what is simple dominance in health technology assessment? In cost effectiveness analysis, there's a concept of dominance based on the computation of an ICER from a deterministic run of the model, which lies in the southeast quadrant. So that is going to be you know, some point which lies in this green area right here. That blue point there is our ICER. If we have a case where our ICERs are showing up there, we have a case of simple dominance. This is a solution concept which is tied to the comparison of a single alternative and a base case. But what if we have multiple different alternatives? How do we rank uh, each one of these alternatives compared to each other? We need a new concept known as extended dominance in order to go and do this. Now, I'm going to provide a definition of extended dominance uh, here. and it's not going to be uh, the usual way which is taught because this is going to be you know much more mathematically uh, inclined so uh, do with that what you must a proposed health technology i is said to be extendedly dominated if there exists some technologies j and k such that the effectiveness from technology i is going to be less than some combination of care options j and k and the costs of j and k right the combination of those two will be less than that of choosing I alone. In a clinical setting, this means that there exists some combination of care treatments which provide a higher utility and a lower cost. An example for going and thinking about this is you know, from this table here. And this table is based on the second chapter of Cost Effectiveness Modeling, a practical course by Richard Eldon, uh, Christopher McCabe, uh, Claire Hume, Peter Hall, and Judy Wright. It's this book. Uh, if you're into this stuff, get this. Um, and we're going to go and pay special attention to our change in costs and our change in uh, effectiveness that we go and we have, because that's going to be crucial based on our definition that we go and we have. So if we go and we plot each one of these options uh, on our plane here, right? Options A to options E that we go and we have, um, we go and we get the following picture. Now, we need to go and look at option C here because that's going to be dominated by B and D. Why is that the case? Because we're able to go and draw a chord between B and D, which lies below C, right? That means we're able to go and have a combination care option, which is able to replicate the, res the effectiveness of C, but is also cheaper, right? Again, you know, this doesn't limit uh, what we go and we have if we were to go higher here or have a higher level of uh, effectiveness that we go and we have but the main thing that we go we want to go and know is that we can go and replicate the, the, the effectiveness of c at a lower cost now if we drop out c here right um do we have any options which are extendedly dominated no because if we try drawing a chord uh, between any two treatment options we'll go and get a case where it will lie above each one of these curves or above or on each one of these curves. So we don't have any extended dominance here. And the choice of treatment here is going to be based on whatever threshold value that we're going to go and propose. So um, this is our video on simple and extended dominance. I hope this provided some insight on the topic and I hope my definition uh, wasn't too technical. I hope this video helps. Take care.